Are you ready for regulations that could require you to put a new engine in your schoolie, truck, or ambulance conversion? That's exactly what's happening to diesel owners in California. And you don't even have to be registered in the state for this to apply to you. There's been a lot of confusion about who these rules do apply to, so I wanted to get it straight from the horse's mouth. Everything you're going to hear in this video comes straight from the California Air Resources Board, or CARB. I'm going to tell you what you need to do to avoid a hassle when you're registering or renewing or just driving around. And even if your vehicle doesn't seem to be affected by this, you might want to stick around to the end because I'm going to tell you about some new legislation that directly targets RVs and schoolies. There's a lot of words in this video and I apologize for that, but there's a lot to say. California. California. I've been calling this a new regulation, but that's not really accurate. CARB laid out a very long runway for these changes. The regulations were adopted in 2008. The order is called the truck and bus regulation. It's pretty simple. The compliance schedule, though, isn't that simple. It's based on the engine model year, and the earliest requirements were supposed to go into effect in 2015, with implementation to be completed by 2023. The goal is to get larger, older diesel vehicles off the road, or rather, larger diesel engines which you'll see. And that's a problem because there are a lot of old diesel schoolies. California. California. So if this was announced in 2008, why is it suddenly catching everybody by surprise? Because up until now, CARB has only been enforcing the rules on commercial truck drivers, as far as I can tell. That's how I first heard about the regulation from a friend who is a tractor trailer owner operator. Because it wasn't being enforced on private vehicles, people just assumed that it wasn't ever going to be enforced on private vehicles and that it didn't apply. And most people didn't even read it. And they did the ostrich thing. There, of course, there are a few chicken littles too. You know, the sky is falling, get out of California, schoolies are gonna be banned. And all of a sudden this year, people are getting turned away at the DMV when they try to register or renew. I wanted to know what was real. So I contacted the communication office at CARB and asked for an interview. I didn't want to be like another person who's just commenting on the whole thing and interpreting the regulations. I wanted to know that what I was saying to you was 100% right, which is hard to do because the info's all over the place. It looks like it's all in one convenient booklet, but it's really not. I have links to all the documents that I mentioned here and all the documents you're going to need in the description. California. California. At first, Carb said that they would go on Zoom with me, which would have been perfect because the words would have been coming straight out of the face of someone who's official, but then they opted out of that, which of course they did because if they said something wrong, they might be held responsible. <laughs> Whereas if I say something wrong, even if I'm quoting them, they're just going to say that I misquoted them. But I don't care. They did answer my questions. They just did it via email. Here's what the truck and bus regulation says. The truck and bus regulation affects individuals, private companies, and federal agencies that own diesel vehicles with a gross vehicle weight rating greater than 14,000 pounds that operate in California. The regulation also applies to public and privately owned school buses. However, their compliance requirements are different and reporting is not required. So, Max's GVWR is 10,000 pounds. I'm off the hook, as are most short buses, but I do have friends cat who have 14,000 plus pound GVWR shorties and they would be affected. But also notice the word operate. It doesn't say registered in or garaged in California. It says that operate in California. So if you go to California, you spend time on the LTVA in Blythe, you do an annual pilgrimage to Slab City, none of the exemptions apply to you. We're going to get to the exemptions in a minute. If so, then you are affected by this. California. Compliance is based on engine model year. Now, it's important to note that engine model year is not vehicle model year. Engine model year is typically one year earlier than the vehicle model year. There's an engine model year table in the booklet. There are two of them actually. One is for vehicles that are over 26,000 pounds. The other is for vehicles from 14,001 up to 26,000 pounds. The basic idea is engine models older than 2010 have a date by which they have to have a 2010 or newer engine under the hood. Some of these dates are in the past. So if your vehicle is older than 1999 and you you haven't taken any action, then you're already not in compliance. From this year, 2021, engine model years 2004 and older are required to have 
2010 engine or apply for an exemption. 2005 and 2006 have until 2022, and 2007 to 2009 have until 2023. Anything 2010 or newer is fine. No need to do anything. And by 2023, all vehicles will be expected to have a 2010 or newer engine if they are in the weight requirements and don't have an exemption. Notice there is no distinction between commercial and private vehicles. A lot of people were shocked to see that this applies to them, but it's about getting the vehicles off the road no matter who owns them. You may have noticed that it says that school buses have different requirements. That's not really going to apply unless you are using your bus as an actual school bus because under the California Motor Vehicle Code, buses that transport only the family members of the owner don't fit the definition of a school bus. There are some exceptions to the truck and bus regulation and um, some flexibility options. I linked to info on all of those options, but a lot of them are, I, they're just not going to apply to you. They're for specific types of trucks, um, but there are a few that do. If you don't drive a thousand miles a year in the state, you're exempt. I don't know how they plan to verify this because you can't see from the odometer where you were driving. Please read the whole thing and decide if any of the other exemptions apply to you. But here is the exemption most of you have been waiting for. And most importantly, I'm going to tell you how to use it to avoid problems. You'll find this in the document that's called Final Regulation Order. And there's a link below. Article 4.5, uh, Chapter 2025, Section C, Number 10. Motorhomes for non-commercial private use. So convert to an RV. If your title already says RV, you're good for now. Hang out though, because I'm going to tell you about some changes that are coming around that. I'll get to that in a minute. But if you otherwise would be expected to comply, your best way to avoid replacing your engine is to get your title changed to RV. It's kind of hard to find the info on how exactly to do this in California, so I tracked down the links for that, and those are also in the description. The process varies state to state, and in California, it involves filling out a section of a form called miscellaneous certifications, where you certify that the vehicle has been modified for human habitation. And there's another document called a statement of fact, which I would just take with you to the DMV because it's a little unclear how exactly to fill that out. But with those forms in hand, you go to a DMV office and park on the side. That was specifically mentioned, park on the side. And after processing your form, a DMV agent will go out and verify that your vehicle meets the definition and start the process of changing the title to the appropriate category. I've heard that this process is the quickest and most painless at a AAA office. So it's probably worth joining AAA for, frankly. I've been talking about schoolies, but this applies really to anything that's diesel. If you've done a conversion and get it changed to RV and you're, you're good. The problem is that when you go to the DMV, the DMV and CARB are not the same organization at all. So you have to make sure if you are applying an exemption, you have to put your vehicle into the database, which is the TRUCRS database. This guide, which I link to, has all the information you'll need to report in that system. That's what will flag your vehicle so that the DMV doesn't say, oh no, you're not in compliance when you try to renew your registration. It's very important that you do this part because if you don't, it doesn't matter what you do. If you go to the DMV, I mean, th they don't know this stuff inside and out, right? Chances are they're gonna tell you you can't renew your registration or register your vehicle. Okay, so that's CARB compliance. Now let's look at the new legislation. California, California. You're so far from Memphis, but I still love your kiss. I never will tell you goodbye. Senate Bill 210 was signed into law in 2019, but it hasn't been accepted by CARB yet it probably will be. It directs the California Air Resources Board to develop a new comprehensive heavy duty inspection and maintenance program to control emissions more effectively from non-gasoline on-road heavy duty vehicles with a gross vehicle weight of over 14,000 pounds. And this new program, if it's approved, is going to basically require some form of a smog inspection um, for vehicles in that category. It's going to replace the existing heavy duty inspection programs, which are already there for commercial vehicles. But this, the difference is that this specifically includes and mentions that it would require owners of California registered motorhomes and converted motorhomes aka schoolies, it says schoolies right in the legislation, and recreational vehicles. They have to be tested annually to ensure that all emissions related components work properly, and if not, they have to be repaired in a timely manner. If you can't pass this test, you're not going to be allowed to re-register your vehicle in California. So obviously this applies only to California-based vehicles. It's not such an awful thing. You could probably pass that.
California. Are you affected personally by any of this? No, if you are or not, just tell me how you feel about it. Let me know in the comments. And please keep the California bashing to a minimum because personally, I would be there if I could right now. We're having a hurricane here in Massachusetts, okay? So let me know what you think and here's me getting my emissions test.